Right, we are focusing on the power method for um, actually uh, our start today, and we're going to be looking at many more things that uh, remain extremely important. But in this example, we consider the eigenvalue problem. Ax equals lambda x with uh, the matrix A, which has the, the entries that uh, <clears throat> have been shown there. And uh, the inverse uh, with the entries shown there. Okay, and then obviously the question is use the power method to estimate the dominant eigenvalue and the associated eigenvector, the eigenvalue of the least absolute value and the associated eigenvector. So this is very important for exam purposes, and we discuss this because um, there are just two components. Either two eigenvalues are the same or they are different. So if they have different magnitudes, um, then we are interested in then saying how do we use the power method to estimate the dominant eigenvalue and also to estimate the smallest in terms of uh, magnitude um, absolute value. So let us uh, solve this problem and uh, show um, um, what needs to be done. But we'll mention the following here. Right, in all cases. In all cases, start with the vector one, 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 and and perform the and iterate. Three times. Uh, right. Moreover, use at least four decimal digits without rounding rather with rounding. We look at the solution to this. We look at the solution to this. Now, what do we do here? But before we look at the solution, I'm going to put one more question. I'm going to call it question C. Use the power, the power method. to estimate the remaining eigenvalue in the associated Again, vector. Right. We prepare the solutions to these problems as follows. Right. A couple of things remain extremely important here. So we are looking at part A. The focus is on the power, power method.
We begin as follows by noting that here the dominant eigenvalue can be found by applying the power method to the matrix A. Thus for AX Lambda X We continue The dominant eigenvalue can be found by applying the Okay The power method. So we are using the power method just okay, I'm not picking the right color, just forgive me. All right, so now we continue. Right, so the dominant eigenvalue can be found by applying the power method to the matrix A, thus for AX equals uh, lambda X, and uh, lambda is the eigenvalue. Let's, uh, let us find these. So we understand that obviously we're gonna start with the matrix A, and the matrix A has the entries minus six, zero, six, Four nine two minus three zero five one 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 right so if you multiply this row by these columns so that's gonna be minus six plus six which is exactly zero multiply so it's minus six by one, which is minus six, zero by one, zero and six by one, which is six. So it's six minus six giving us the zero entry. Row by column multiplication yields four by one, which is four plus nine by one, which is nine, giving us a 13 plus two, which is exactly uh, 15. So this one gives us what? 15. The next thing is you might do this row by this column multiplication so that you have minus three, zero, five, and this is exactly two. So we have a two here. Right, with this said, what do we then do? What do we then do? We perform comparison because we have a, a zero entry here. And obviously, we are dealing with the dominant. We are dealing with the dominant um, eigenvalue. Now, um, it is sensible to say the number 15 being the most dominant, but also because we need to compare with the 1, 1, 1 vector. We, need, we attempt to achieve that. And now there's a zero here, which we cannot be able to change but we can be able to factor out 15, the largest one. Factoring out 15, the largest one is gonna produce a zero, a one, and then it's gonna produce two out of 15, like this. And simultaneously, it is evident that this is the same as zero, one, then 
you have uh, 2 divided by 15, which is uh, 0 0.133. 3. Okay. How many decimal places? How many decimal digits? 4. Okay. Use at least 4 decimal digits with rounding. So now we have 4 of them here. Uh, yes, 4 of them. So this is uh, exactly what we have. So this is the one. Next. Because now we have got this, we take exactly this here, which is some eigenvector, and then we continue with the process. So we take the matrix A still, with the entries minus six, zero, six, four, nine, two. Minus three zero five, we multiply it by the vector x in the ax in the eigenvalue problem equation. So we take the zero one zero point one three double three. So we have zero one, which is exactly now zero point one like this. So what do we get out of these? Okay, so now you continue with the multiplication. So if you multiply minus 6 by 0, you get exactly a 0, 0 by 1, you get a 0 and 6 by these, which is 0 0.8, 1, 2, 3, like this. Then you do row by column multiplication, which means 4 by 0, 0, 9 by 1 is exactly 9 plus 2 by this. Okay, that gives us exactly 9 point. 2, Right, here doing row by column multiplication, this by that is 0, this by that is 0, 5 by this. 0 point. Zero point um six 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 then seven. Okay. The next thing is now we look at these entries and we need to pick the dominant, the biggest one, the biggest entry out of this, but also to achieve the one um as well. But we're dealing with the most dominant um entry, and now uh it is clear that it is uh, this one nine point two double six seven. which is 0 0.08631 0 0.0719 like this next So, how many iterations uh, did uh, we discussed here? Uh, let's see. Consider this. Yeah, okay. And iterate three times. Three times. So, let's use uh, the third one. Oops. Okay, let's see. Yes, use at least your and iterate three times, three times. So let's let's do the third time. Right, during the third time, we take still the matrix A, and then four nine two minus three zero five. We multiply by. 0 0.08631 0 
And this, if you multiply this, what do you achieve? So, let's uh, use our calculator. Right. Right, so using a calculator, we'd have minus six by this. So it's minus six by zero point zero eight six three zero by this is zero plus six times zero point zero seven one nine. Okay, so what we're then getting here is exactly that entry. Okay, obviously, to four decimals, it's the minus 0 0.0864. And then now, you multiply this with that. Okay, so four times four times this zero point zero eight six three plus nine plus two times zero point zero seven one nine. So, and this gives us nine point four eight nine. And then the bottom row also. So you have also minus three times zero point zero eight six three. This by that is zero plus five times zero point zero seven one nine um, equals. Right. So what we're getting is. 0 0.1006. Okay. And then now, with this said, we proceed. So, what is the meaning of this? Right, the meaning of this here is that when we multiply, we're getting the minus 0. Point 0, 08 64 9 point 484 0 point 1006 and then now you're going to pull out the biggest one so that is 9.489 and then now here it's going to be 1 and then here now you want to divide these by that let's use some division right so if you do the division what you're then going to achieve is you take the 0 0.1006, you divide by 9.489, like this, which is what you're going to get then is that you have 0 point, 0.4 decimals, 0 0.0106. Okay, so that is the bottom one, and then you have a one, 
And then now the top one here also, if you divide this one by this. So minus 0 0.08. Six four minus zero point zero eight six four. You divide by nine point four eight nine minus zero point zero zero nine one. And the answer is minus zero point zero zero nine one zero point zero one zero six. Okay, that's fine. So this one here is minus 0 0.0091. Minus 0 0.0091. Okay. And so here is the implication of these computations. After, after three iterations, we obtain oh, this that sits here is the lambda. So you obtain lambda equals nine point four eight nine. X. And you obtain X, the vector, minus zero point double zero nine one one zero point zero one zero six. Okay, so we have that. Right, but I'm going to make this inference here to say after 10 iterations, which is possible to do. We obtain, okay, we have not gone up to 10 because the method is clear, but if we were to continue to 10, um, this is 8. 0.123. 1 0 point 0.1 right so we have this We have this, and I want to make a note, write a note here.
I want to write a note here. Moreover, right, it is possible to to find the eigenvalues of the matrix A. and the corresponding eigenvectors. Now with this said then thus for, let's uh, just say that uh, thus the eigenvalues are Thus, the eigenvalues are lambda equals minus 4, lambda equals 3, lambda equals 9. For lambda, for example, for lambda equals 9, The eigenvector is so the eigenvector for lambda equals. equals 3, the eigenvector For well, lambda equals minus four. The eigenvector is okay, in which case in each case you can call the eigenvector vector x. The eigenvector is Three minus fourteen over thirteen one. Okay, now we're done with part A. Use the power method to estimate the eigenvalue of the least absolute value and the associated associated eigenvector. So now we're going to deal with the least one. But I said ready to, to use the power method. You don't need to compute the
you don't need to compute the eigenvalues first. That's the point. Um, but now we're focusing on part B. But there's a remark here that the smallest absolute value can be obtained by computing the inverse of A. Now we're dealing with the smallest one because we dealt with the largest one in terms of the magnitude, but now we're dealing with the smallest one. And I want us to uh, draw a comparison between the two approaches. And then also the one that is intermediate in, in terms of its magnitude. So the smallest absolute value can be obtained by computing the inverse of A and then using the power method because why does it work to compute the inverse and then using the power method? Well, because we the reason together that Ax equals lambda x is sort of the eigenvalue problem that we study. Solving for x means, therefore, we have x equals what? Right, x equals. Right, so you can get x by saying x equals, so you multiply by the inverse of a. Lambda x. Like so. like so. So it is possible that at this point, you can actually then decide to divide by lambda so that you have x over lambda and this is equal to, is then a inverse x equal to um, one over lambda x. And uh, we look at the converse of this. Uh, reasoning. And conversely, right, so as a converse, we actually can consider that if you have A inverse X, which equals mu X, goodness me, this means that we can get X we can be able to get x from this. So if we are here, we just call this one mu. Calling the one over lambda mu so that we look at the whole thing in reverse, um, in a converse fashion, looking at the mathematical converse. Um, this would mean therefore, we would write once again, a inverse x equals to mu x and what is all these? And now we can make solve for x out of this, meaning x is the same as a, a inverse x, which is a mu x. So in other words, you can just multiply both sides by a to make x a subject in each case, Obviously, we're attempting to solve for x. And what is the meaning of these? This is then Ax. 
is equal to, you can divide by the mu again, so that AX is one over mu X. Right, so in other words, this is true in both directions. Okay, so, but what is the significance of these? Well, the significance of these is given the matrix equation here, we can be in a position to find the, or to estimate this, the eigenvalue associated with the smallest eigenvalue in terms of um, its magnitude. It is worth mentioning that this proves that Right, it proves that if you have the lambdas, the many eigenvalues have a finite number of them, or the eigenvalues of A, If and only if, oops, hmm. okay, if and only if, that's what I'm trying to, right here, if and only if, okay, this proves that lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n are the eigenvalues of A, if and only if the eigenvalues of A inverse are powerful results. One over lambda one, one over lambda two, and so on. So to get the eigenvalues of the mat of the inverse matrix, you just reciprocate and just to make those eigenvalues one over one over, and they will then be eigenvalues of the inverse matrix. Then what is then the implication of these hands? The eigenvalue. of A with the smallest absolute value is the inverse of the Eigenvalue of the matrix inverse with the largest value. So we are effectively then saying so compute. So compute A inverse and apply the power method. Okay, we're saying this proves that lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n are the eigenvalues of A, if and only if the eigenvalues of A inverse are 1 over lambda 1, 1 over lambda 2, 1 over lambda n. Hence, the eigenvalue of A with the smallest eigenvalue is the 
Um, is the inverse of the eigenvalue of, yes, right. Hence the eigenvalue of A with the smallest eigenvalue is the inverse of the eigenvalue of A inverse with the largest eigenvalue, with the largest value, magnitude. Okay, so we can just uh, study the inverse A and the matrix A interchangeably in that with that understanding. But so what do we need to do here? To deal with the smallest magnitude and the largest magnitude eigenvalues, what do we do? So compute the inverse of A and apply the power method. Why? How would computing the inverse of A and applying the power method work? It's just going to work because the eigenvalue of A with the smallest eigenvalue, uh, absolute value, which is what we want, is the inverse of the eigenvalue of A inverse with the largest. So what are we looking for here? The eigenvalue with the least eigenvalue. Uh, absolute value. But with the least second value here, normally we deal with the dominant. So we're going to find the inverse of the matrix A by good luck, it's already there. And with that inverse, then the inverse is going to produce the absolute value um, or rather the eigenvalue with the largest magnitude. All right. And that is the, the one we want. All right. So uh, we continue. We continue. Let's continue. Right, so now we are still focusing on uh, the part B. Okay. So how do we do the part B? So we're going to deal with the inverse of A. What is the inverse of A? which is minus five out of 12, zero, one half. Thirteen out of 54. One out of nine, minus one third, minus one quarter. Zero and one half. So what do we do here? We continue like uh, before. And now we are dealing with the second part, the smallest absolute value. Okay, dealing with the smallest absolute value, We take the matrix. Minus five out of 12. 13 out of 54. Minus one quarter. Zero. One out of nine, zero. 
one half minus one out of three, one half. One, one, one. Right, so if you multiply these, we're looking for the smallest absolute value here. So, but the smallest absolute value is going to be, the smallest absolute value of A is going to be the biggest absolute value in the inverse we are looking at, because the power method deals with dominance, the largest things. So now we're going to look for the largest things in the inverse and they are the smallest things in the matrix A. All right, so if we multiply these by this, these by that, these by that, and we, 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 we find the sum. These, these by that, these by that, these by that, we have zero. Zero one. This by that, this by that, this by that, we have a zero point. Now look for the the biggest one. Which one is the biggest one? Uh, the biggest uh, number here. The biggest number is zero point two five. The biggest decimal. So we factor it out. And then now it means we're going to divide this one by the 0 0.25, double zero, and that is 0 point quadruple three. If you divide these by 0 0.25, you get 0 0.0741. You divide these by that, you have a one. Okay, remember the power method is just about uh, the largest magnitude. So now we are looking for the largest magnitude um, absolute value, um, which is the, the dominant or which is the largest in the inverse matrix. Okay, next, let's do a couple of iterations here. So still we consider the inverse matrix and we have minus five out of 12, 13 out of 54, minus one quarter, zero, one ninth, zero. One half minus one third, one half. So now it is then now you have this one. You take this vector, which is sort of the eigen vector, let's set it with this eigen value. You you plug it in in this position. So it's zero point three three. Three, three, zero point zero seven, four one, and then one. Right, we multiply, do row by column multiplication, this minus five out of 12 by this, zero by this, half by this, you add everything. So what this produces is that we have zero point three six one one minus zero point two four four nine zero point four one six seven. Pull out the largest one. which is 0 
Right, so if you pull out the largest one, which is one, 0 0.5877. Six six seven. After two iterations. Right, after two iterations. We estimate the dominant the dominant eigenvalue of A inverse S. Zero point four one six seven. Zero point four one six seven. And the corresponding Eigen vector as this is the corresponding Eigen vector, which is the zero point A double six seven minus zero point. Five eight double seven then one. What is the meaning of 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 all this here? The eigenvalue of least magnitude of A is therefore lambda which equals one over one over this. Okay, because this one is the biggest one. It's the biggest one for the inverse relative to 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. It is the biggest one. So now the eigenvalue of least magnitude is therefore now um, we want to get that of A. The eigenvalue of the least magnitude of A. So we divide, uh, we take the reciprocal and it is. Um, four one six seven, and this is two point like this, and the corresponding Eigen vector. Is the one given above? Is 
that is zero point Okay, let's just say it's most certainly the one given above. It's enough because we've already stated that. But my point is we have been able to answer this question. What is the question? The dominant eigenvalue of A, we dealt, we found it. We used the power method to estimate the dominant eigenvalue. And then also we used the power method to estimate the eigenvalue of the least absolute value. So now in both cases, we estimated the eigenvalue of the least magnitude and the eigenvalue of the least absolute value. Right, so either way, we are then um, done with this. The one of the least absolute value. So for the least absolute value, we found we find the inverse. And we deal with the inverse, looking for the dominant one in the inverse, and then we take one over. And But for the dominant eigenvalue, we just use the matrix A. Okay, what about the part C? We need to use the power method to estimate the remaining eigenvalue because of, yeah, there's a part where I said it, we said it all the three uh, eigenvalues. is a three by three matrix, this, so it has three eigenvalues. But use the power method to estimate the remaining eigenvalue and associated eigenvalue. Right, so... Um, Need to estimate the remaining one. Let's look at how we do that part. But also, I mean, we took it a, a chance to state, okay, so the eigenvalues themselves are minus four, three, nine. So there are three of them. The dominant one in terms of magnitude is the nine. And uh, we have uh, been able to see uh, through the estimation that um, we are getting, we got closer and closer to the nine in our um, pursuit for this computation. It was an 8.99 um, after 10 iterations, meaning we're very close to the nine up there. And so it's a very interesting observation that indeed the dominant one uh, of the largest magnitude is nine and we're close to it using the power method. So indeed the power method sort of converges to the most dominant, uh, but also if we're looking for the least magnitude uh, absolute value, um, um, rather eigenvalue, we uh, are sure the power method also converges um, accordingly. Okay, we have seen also in this part B. Okay, for instance, in the part B, we saw that uh, the eigenvalue is 2.4 of the least magnitude. If you look at, um, it's 2.4, so it was closer to three of the least magnitude because three magnitudes here, three, uh, three, four, and nine, three is the smallest one. So the two point something was getting closer to three. So if you could do, like up to 10 iterations, you could get very close to three. So indeed the power method works wonderfully. So it converges to the correct one. So using the power method, we do not have to find the eigenvalues. We can just use the power method all the time to estimate instead of, so now um, in linear algebra, we find the eigenvalues. So how else can we deal with these? So we can decide to say, okay, Instead of having to do the absolute value, the finding the absolute values, we can just use the power method to estimate. But we need a starting eigen, um, um, eigen vector. We need a starting eigen vector. Okay, let's just proceed and do the next part. What is the next part? The next part focuses on um, a couple of things, but focuses on the intermediate one. Okay, for the dominant one, for the dominant 
um, of the eigenvalue of the largest magnitude, we use the matrix A. Of the least magnitude, we use the inverse. And then now I want us to have a discussion about the intermediate um, magnitude. I can value the intermediate magnitude uh, um, in terms of what we do there, because these are the things that come in the exam. Okay, that is the part C. Part C. Okay, let's look at part C here. Okay. Um, Let's look at part C. To do part C, it's all interesting stuff. Let's just get cracking with it. Okay, there's a discussion about the intermediate one, and I want us to go through the discussion that is quite very, very helpful. All right. Okay, continue. We continue. Right, we continue, please. Just one sec. Let's go through the discussion about the intermediate one. The, the couple of things that remain very important. The two calculated the two calculated eigenvalues. Right, lambda equals approximately nine point two six six seven and lambda two approximately two point four doubles. Uh, Triple zero. So we continue. We continue. Right, we note that both lie in the union in the union of the um, disks. Right, so the couple of disks here, like your D2 and D3. The two calculated eigenvalues, which is lambda approximately 9.2 that and the 2.4, both lie in the union of the disks. Um, D2 and D3. I'm going to comment on the discs, the Josh the Josh Gordon discs. Um, right. So, hence, hence we we know.
Okay, we continue. And hence we know from one. Okay, my system is refreshing a little bit. So I'm just a little bit slowing down because I'm sure that it is the system that is making my writing to appear after a little a little while. That the remaining eigenvalue Um, right, the remaining eigenvalue lambda 3 must lie in D1. Okay, I'm going to comment on the just current disks. Um, right in D1. Okay, must lie in D1. Right now, the couple of things I want us to consider, and that would be that lambda three itself must be near minus six. Must be near minus six. All right, so we continue. Right, so must be near minus six. Okay, when I discuss the Kishlech Gordon circles, however, in order To use the inverse power method, we must shift Shift the eigenvalues okay, there's going to be a shift of the eigenvalues. So if lambda, for example, is an eigenvalue of A with corresponding with corresponding eigenvector Again, vector x, then for example, which is lambda x. which is lambda plus six X. Okay, so if lambda is an eigenvalue of A with corresponding eigenvector, then obviously we're dealing with the intermediate case, please, because we dealt with the least magnitude and the largest magnitude. 
And now we're dealing with the intermediate case and we're looking at the eigenvalue problem where lambda itself is lambda x. And uh, now you have that the, we actually therefore are able to transform this system in this particular manner. And this transformation of sort of the subtraction of the minus minus six x minus six x here we put the identity matrix because we are having a matrix a on the left of the equation okay the observation then is that so i want us to note something here so obvious at this point here you have the the lambda plus six x, and then we proceed. Hence, the eigenvalues of a plus six i r lambda one plus six Lambda two plus six, lambda three plus six. Okay, we are continuing and we're analyzing this. Okay, I'm going to speak about the Jashkorin circles, please, and to justify the use of the number six here. Um, that the eigenvalue is close to minus six, but we know that the eigenvalue is minus four. We saw that because we had the three, we had the nine, and we we got minus four. I wrote it earlier. So um, obviously, but we're speaking of estimates here and using the Jeshgorin circles, we estimated to be close to minus six. Um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna look at the graphical representation of the Jeshgorin circles here. But now I want to mention also that these and the eigenvalues of the matrix A plus six I are this, okay? And the eigenvalues. Right, and the eigenvalues of a plus six I. Or one out of lambda one plus six, one out of lambda two plus six, one out of lambda three plus six, and so on. Okay, for the inverse, we just, through the argument raised, we just take the reciprocals of the, of those matrices, uh, of the eigenvalues. Okay, what is the meaning of these? We note that. Right, we note that the eigenvectors right, the eigenvectors remain unchanged. This is very important. Okay. So the eigenvalues keep changing, but the eigenvectors remain what? They remain unchanged, but also since Lambda three is near minus six. Lambda three plus six will be small. Thus, The one out of lambda three plus six
will be will be the dominant dominant eigenvalue eigenvalue of the matrix A plus 6i compared to compared to the lambda one plus six. Double five and Okay, and also the one out of lambda two plus six is about one one nine zero. Okay, well, I want us to discuss this, obviously. Um, but now um, I want to first mention that in so the power method can be used. to find it. But first, we use the most popular Gauss Jordan, Jordan method. to obtain a plus six i all right a couple of things here's the eigenvalues of a plus six i are this in the eigenvalues of the inverse of that are these note that the eigenvectors remain unchanged but since lambda three is near minus six um, lambda 3 plus 6 will be small. Okay. Very small. If lambda 3 plus 6 is small, then the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse will be the dominant eigenvalue of the inverse matrix compared to lambda 1 plus 6, which is approximately that, and lambda 2 plus 6, which is approximately 0 0.0. And so the power method can be used to find it. Okay. Um, I want to, okay, I'm going to elaborate on the use of the discovering disks and the justification of the fact that the minus six the eigenvalue is closer to minus six using the Jeshgorin circles. But first things first, I want us to demonstrate the power of the power method or the actual strength of this power method for the intermediate eigenvalue or the eigenvalue of so we start with this matrix here as follows. Okay. 
Right, we start with this matrix here as follows. So obviously, I want us to remember something first, for this to make sense. Let's remember the matrix A that we started with. We remember that the matrix A is this one. Right, so now if you have the A plus 6I. Okay, now we're going to just um, like add 6 to each of the diagonal entries. If you add 6 to each of the diagonal entries. So A, if you add 6 here, 6 minus 6 is 0. 0, 6. Okay, because the identity matrix only has 1s in the main diagonal. So if you add a six here, it's gonna become a 15, but the four is gonna remain the same. And then you're gonna have a 15, and then a two, and then minus three zero, and then if you add a six to the five, it's gonna be an 11. So that is that. But now using the goals you're done, so you have this, then you have four, 15, then 2, you have minus 3, 0, 11. And then you have 1, 0, 0. We have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So what do we get here? We need a 1 here. Because we want to get the inverse of this matrix, so we interchange row rows one and three, getting putting row three in the first position, so that's zero eleven, um, double zero one. The second row is unaltered, and then you have six. So which is minus three, zero eleven, double zero one. Okay, let's look at four fifteen two. And then zero one zero. Which is double zero six. Uh, one zero zero. Right, and then now we're gonna want to get the inverse or like as usual in linear algebra, we multiply the phase row by minus one third. 11 out of 3 here, 0, 0, minus 1 third. 4, 15, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 6, 1, 0, 0. And then you have 1, 0, minus, minus 11 out of 3. Zero zero and then you have four fifteen two and then you have zero one zero. Zero zero six. Zero, 
Row two minus four row one. One zero minus one of a three. Zero. Fifteen. And if you do here, you multiply by minus four and you add to this, that's like a forty four out of three plus two, which is a fifty. out of three. And then okay, so this one zero, this one one, this one four out of three. Zero zero six one zero zero. Okay, now what is this? It's exactly this, but now we want to get a one here. So which means that we're gonna keep the face row the same. One zero minus eleven. One zero minus eleven out of three. One zero minus one third. Okay, then you have one over fifteen. Which is zero one. And then you divide this one by fifteen. Okay, because you multiply, if you divide this one by 15, then it's like you're going to have 15 by 3 in the denominator, making it a 45. So it's like a 50 out of 45. 5 goes up in times into 50, it goes 10 times into 45, 9 times. It's 10 out of 9. Right, so... Zero, which is one out of fifteen. Fifteen here. Okay, then here we multiply by one sixth. Which is one sixth double zero. Then the next thing is to get so the previous matrix is very equivalent to this. Row two minus ten over nine, row three. Okay, I want to get a zero here. But obviously, if you multiply this one by minus 10 over 9, what does this become? So 10 out of 6 would give us what? Would give us 5 out of 3. And it is minus 5 out of 27. So if you multiply this one by z uh, by minus ten out of nine, one zero minus eleven out of three, one zero minus one out of three. Mm hmm. I can just can just change this one. Let's row reduce it. 
row 1 plus 11 out of 3, row 3. Okay, now plus 11 out of 3, this one multiplied by 11 out of 3, it becomes 11 out of 18. Multiplying this by 11 out of 3, it becomes 11 out of 18, and then plus 1. So 11 out of 18 plus 1 is like 11 out of 18, then this one is 18 out of 18. So what is 11 plus 18? Right, so we you have 11 plus 18 giving us a 29. A 29 out of 18. And then we have this one here, which is row 1 plus 0 out of 3, which is zero minus one out of three okay i need to cross check the matrix inverse please and make sure that this matrix inverse is the correct one because i'm just we're just doing it so there is a chance of human error Okay, we want to find the, the inverse of this matrix uh, A plus 6i. I want to also use computer algebra to, 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 to test this. Um, I want to use com uh, computer algebra to test this. which is zero, zero, 006 4152 minus 3011 okay right a couple of typos this is fine you see Okay, we might change this one. So if you say now 11, just to, to want to do a check quickly. Okay, because you multiply row three, this one by 11 out of three, and then you add to one. Let, let me just check this. Can come here. Just make sure you get the correct answer. Right. So now I was I'm effectively saying here. So we having the one out of six. And we multiplied by eleven out of three. So 1 of 6 by 11 of 3, you add to 1. Which is exactly 29 out of 18. So there is uh, uh, let me see a small error. Okay, yeah, there's a small error here. Because, oh, this is 0. This is zero, but now it was accidentally written as a, as, as a one here. See, it's zero, zero, one, three. Okay. Check this. So this is zero. Let's write this one as zero. Okay, so, so this one is zero. Uh, 
And then this one is therefore going to become, if you multiply, it's going to be your know, this by this, 11 by 6, uh, 1 over 6 is going to be 11 out of 11 out of 18, which is exactly what uh, I expected. Right, so the inverse is now correct. I used to also computer algebra to check it. So the conclusion then is that, hence, A plus six I eleven out of eighteen zero minus one out of three, which is minus five out of twenty seven. One out of five, uh, out of fifteen. Four out of forty-five. One out of six zero zero. So this is what we get. Okay, when you get to this point now, the power method power method is applied. Right, so obviously at this point using the power method because we're dealing with the most intermediate. So we're going to take the inverse, which is this one here. Zero minus one over three, which is minus five out of 27. Four out of 45. One of six zero zero. If you multiply this row by column, row by column, row by column, you get zero point two seven seven like that. Seven minus zero point. Zero two nine six zero point one six six seven zero point two seven seven seven. Factoring it out because it's the biggest one here, is the biggest one, so you factor the biggest one amongst the entries, you divide each of these by 0 0.2777, and that gives minus 0 0.1067, 0 0.6000. 0. And then now, you get 11 out of 18, 0 minus 1 third, minus 5 out of 27, 1 out of these, 4 out of 45. One six zero zero. 
one minus zero point one zero six seven zero point zero six If you multiply these, what do you get? 0 0.4, 1, 1, 1, minus 0 0.1390, 0 0.1667, 0 0.1680, 0 0.1667. Okay, the biggest magnitude is 0 0.4, 1, 1, 1. We factor it out, and we have one zero point three three eight zero zero point four zero five four and we make a couple of observations that uh, after two. After two iterations, one over lambda three plus six is a zero point four. Um, triple one, which is coming from here, is zero point four triple one is coming from there. Lambda three, one divided by zero point four minus six. Okay, we take the reciprocal of this, and then we solve. We solve for lambda three from this making it the subject of the equation, and that gives us minus 3.5676. X becomes 0.4. the eigenvector, which is exactly one minus three minus 0 0.3380, and then 0 0.4054 which becomes the eigenvector, 1, 0 0.3380, 0 0.4054. Okay, this, we give a comment here that after 10, After 10 iterations, which is one divided by 0 0.5, one, two, three, minus six, 4.123 0 0.3 59 0. Right, after 10 iterations, we get this, like we did the two iterations, so, and, and we proceed to compare. To compare this with the result.
when lambda equals minus four, Okay, um, there's going to be an M that is going to come from the um, eigenvector factorization. I did not quite spend time on the on on these because they're not very popular. But associated with this, when we, there's an M that an M and an N, those numbers that are factored out of the um, of the eigenvector, I'm just going to mention this in passing. All right, so um. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, I want to com comment on the fact that you compare these the result when lambda equals minus four and m because the m is actually the one third because uh, the eigenvector is first obtained as three m. Um, three M minus fourteen out of thirteen M. So this sort of becomes the Aiken vector. And uh, one can choose this. You can factor out this and have this. Right, so that when M is one third, then you get the, uh, you can choose M to be one third because it's arbitrary, et cetera. Okay. But what is the significance of this? Right, so this one, put it in a block. And then you have X. Okay, if you take M to be one third in this, that's going to be one, put the one third is going to be minus out of 39 and then it's going to be one third okay so okay just observe that right you observe that which is one minus zero point three five nine zero zero point three 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 like this compare these with the result when x bar is this 
Let's check. Obviously, you can see that after 10 iterations, we got one and then this. Um, something I want to comment in the negative. I think that um, just be here now. X1 is 3x3. So X2 is, okay, I'm with you now. I'm just taking the signs here. I think there's a sign error. Um, because now you're going to have X2 is minus. Yeah. And then the 2X x1 becomes 3x3 and then it becomes 12 14 which is minus okay um right i want us to observe this but uh, observe the sign difference in the middle entry Right, so that you have, uh, but you can see that the 1 and the 0 0.33 are match uh, precisely. They match most uh, actually precisely, but you can see that there's just a sign issue here in terms of the fact that this is positive here, but uh, obviously up this side it is negative. Um, the negative is indeed uh, a very correct observation, but Here, this must be negative, this because it is negative here. So this must be negative. Okay, because I'm just saying after ten iterations, because you was sort of done in the textbooks, or um, I'm sure that somebody missed a sign here, uh, etc. But it must be negative because you can see that out of two iterations is negative. I'm just seeing the sign. Uh, difference from the material I'm using, but yeah, it's negative, it's negative, negative, so yeah, it actually works well. Now, observe this as actually very important that um, this M comes from the actual calculation process of the eigenvector. In other words, for lambda equal to minus four, this is sort of the this is the eigenvector, three, etc. You can just choose the m is a common factor. But uh, using the power method, we can see that ten iterations, we get closer and closer to the to actually the eigenvector itself because it's one then zero point three 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 so. We get close there, much, much closer. Okay. I want to give a comment about something extremely important here. I want to give a comment about something extremely important. Um. as follows. I want to talk about, before we conclude our discussion today, if time allows, just a comment on the Josh Gorin. Josh Gorin Josh Gorin's theorem. All right, so now let's look at the Josh Gorin, Josh Gorin circle, Josh Gorin circle theorem. So let me try it a little bit big here. Oops. 
Right, let me write a little bit big because I want us to just have a, a brief discussion about this because it's very important for the intermediate, for the intermediate um, eigenvalue because the smallest and the largest we have seen, we can deal with the matrix A and the, uh, and the, and the, and the inverse, but the Jesh Gorin's, right, we're continuing quickly. Jesh Gorin's Jesh Gorin's circle theorems. Can be formulated. Formulated as follows. So we have the matrix A. Four nine two twelve zero one out of two thirteen out of fifty four. One out of nine minus one third minus one quarter zero in one half. Okay, these are the metrics where the metrics started with. And uh, with these matrices. Theorem one. Let A be an N by N matrix. With the A IJs real or complex valued then all the eigenvalues of a lie in the union of the following following n disks di in the complex plane di z z minus ai is less or equal to the summation like so. Uh, 
i equals one two and so on di is simply the disk with center AII in radius equal to the sum. of the absolute values of the entries in row I. Which are not on the main diagonal. There's a theorem. Theorem two. If K of these disks do not touch the other n minus k disks then exactly k eigenvalues counting multiplicities lie in the union of those K disks. But the matrix A Above we have disk one Z in C Z minus this. plus six, which equals six. Disc two, Z minus nine, which is four plus, Two. Okay, we're going to just uh, look at where these numbers are coming from. Disk three. Z element of the complex numbers such that 
z minus um okay these just going circles are very important when we are looking at the intermediate um absolute value so minus five here and this is minus three plus zero three Okay. These circles themselves, the Cheshkorin circles are, if you are looking at the imaginary axis, So you can have uh, a circle here, centered at five. In another circle centered at nine of radius six or less. Something like that. Um, okay. Okay, while well, we're running a discussion about the church Gordon circles, please. So there's a point I want to, I'm trying to drive towards here. And this one is a real part of Z. Disc two, disc three. Okay, um, now with this actually mentioned here, what then can we observe at this point from this? Right, I want us to look at the According to to Jesh Gorin, one and two, one. Eigenvalue one eigenvalue lies in disk one and the other two lie in D2 union D3. According to Judge Gorin theorem one and theorem two, one eigenvalue sort of lies in disk one and the other two lie in the union of the disks. Again, value.
Okay. Now, theorem one actually mentions that if A, if you let A to be an N by N matrix with the AIJs real or complex valued, so these are the entries in the matrix, then all the eigenvalues of A lie in the union of the uh, following N disks, the I in the complex plane, so you have the union of the disks such that here you have Z in C and here you have Z minus the AII. So such that this is uh, less or equal to the sum of the other entries that are, are, are of diagonal entries, of diagonal entries. So obviously we understand therefore that the Z minus AII um, of the matrix A. So, in view of this, it means, therefore, the Judge Gordon circles would actually, therefore, have this uh, Z minus 6, Z, Z minus into minus 6, and then Z minus 9, and then Z minus 5. Z minus into minus 6, Z, uh, because these are the entries in the main diagonal, then here you're going to add the off diagonal entries uh, right so you find the summation of the modulus of the off diagonal entries where the i runs from one to n because we're dealing with uh, the n by n matrix there like so now moreover in view of that here you have Zero plus six. Okay, so obviously at this point uh, you're gonna actually proceed to add the off diagonal entries um, outside. Outside. Um. If you look at, for instance, at the ni entry nine, what is outside the entry nine? Right, outside the entry nine, you'd have four and two. Right, outside the entry five, on the main diagonal, would be minus three and zero. Right, so the off diagonal entries then of the right off six would be what? There would have to be a nine here. Just checking on these because the off diagonal entries here you'd have actually. Um, exactly a zero and a nine. Right, that's what you'd need according to the theorem one. Theorem two, if K of these disks do not touch, um, do not touch the other N minus K disks, then exactly K eigenvalues counting multiplicities lie in the union of the K disks. Right, so we know that this is very important because it might happen that if K of these disks do not touch, the other n minus k because not all the disks touch right so obviously at this point uh, you really can see that two sort of the disks uh, touch but the others don't the others don't
All right. So I said ready, there is a modification here that is necessary. Um, do you then say the one that is centered at six would have to, the off diagonal entries of six would have to be provided I made a typo here. See the matrix A. Oh, you see? That entry is what? Ah, this entry is six. That's the reason why I'm wondering why. Okay, so there's an entry that is six, but that entry was written correctly here. I was wondering why. So this entry is six apologies there, so that this is correct. Now, with this said, obviously this will be the just going circles. According to the just going one and two, the eigenvalue um, lies in D one. One eigenvalue lies in D one and the other two lie in the intersecting ones. Okay, so that is what the theorems vehemently both agree, because if K of these discs do not touch the other, N minus K discs, so you have discs that do not touch, like one does not touch two, then exactly K eigenvalues, counting multiplicities, lie in the union of those K discs. So one disk, one eigenvalue is going to lie in one, and then the other two is going to, uh, going to lie in the union. What is the meaning of this? Okay, we're concluding, please. What is the meaning of this? Well, it means that the minus six is gonna lie in disk Okay. Okay, let's just ex uh, explain, uh, elaborate. Okay, we are finishing please, but this is the point I'm trying to to get to, to, but I'm going to be really very fast. Right, for the three by three matrix. Minus six, zero, six. Nine two minus three zero five minus lambda zero six minus lambda. Oof. Okay, main diagonal entry is not obviously. So the minus lambda, but yeah, I'm trying to just elaborate on, I know that you know this very well, but um, we we'll use these to find the eigenvalues. So the eigenvalues will lie in the disks, in the Judge Gordon disks. So I want us to drive towards that point. And therefore, A minus lambda I equals zero. I'm not going to waste a lot of time there. So here it means that lambda becomes, so this becomes nine minus lambda.
which is lambda minus 3. And then this is minus 4, 3, 9. We give the comment that this confirms this confirms our area conclusion. Because minus four lies in disk one, while while okay, we're concluding, please. While Lambda equals three and lambda equals nine, the other eigenvalues lie in D two union D three. Okay. So this confirms our earlier conclusion because you have that observation there that those eigenvalues lie in the respective disks because those disks do not all touch. There's a disk, the one that is centered at minus six does not touch the others. Because it doesn't touch the other two, this one does not touch the other two. Um, according to this theorem here, if the k of this disk do not touch the other n minus k disks, then exactly k, the ones that do not touch, then exactly k eigenvalues counting multiplicities lie in the union of those disks. Okay, so in other words, you have those um eigenvalues that lie in the union and obviously you can see that um in these disks here you have those two eigenvalues um what are the eigenvalues the one for lambda equals three and nine uh because so you can see that three and nine nine is here and three is there and they are in the disks but minus four is a number that is there so that uh, we have that um, the minus four would lie in disk one. But I mean, what is the point of this? What is the essence of this? The essence of this is uh, the discussion we had here about the intermediate eigenvalue. Because now we are saying in the part C, the two calculated eigenvalues, we're finishing please now, lambda equals this and lambda, we estimated those, both lie in the union of the disks. Yes, these ones both lie in the union of the disks we we're talking about, we we're spoken about. Hence, we know from Roman figure one, is a discussion that uh, I've just included now, that the remaining eigenvalue must lie, must lie in D1, must lie in D1. That is lambda three must be near minus six. So, the one that, so in other words, for the intermediate eigenvalue, we consider these judge Gorin circles in this, and, and the judge Gorin circle theorems. 
And then now we realize that, okay, from the Jeshgorin circles, we use the minus six. We use that minus six. Where is the minus six coming from? It's the center. What is the minus six? The minus six is actually the center of one of the disks. And uh, being the center of one of the disks, we used it wonderfully here. And uh, we subtracted it here and used it here. And uh, we're able to give an estimate of the lambda three. Lambda three being the eigenvalue that lies close to um okay, this is also minus this because this is like two. One of uh this is like so this is gonna be like minus two, uh, yeah, minus four. Sorry. It demonstrates uh, just uh, the fact that we can use this test going circles in the power method to solve these problems. Okay, this I believe made a bit of sense. Um, in particular, the dominant case, the least magnitude case, and the intermediate case uses the test going circles. I must thank you for joining us today. I know that we've dragged much. Um, see you um, I need to check my th the thing. Okay, the approximate time is four. The approximate time is four, and then I can communicate. Um, right, so yeah, the approximate time is four, but I'm going to check the, the load chatting thing, schedule, because I uh, yeah, it shows uh, the one, it might, uh, we might be fine tomorrow, if I set the time at four, yeah, we're okay. According to the load chatting schedule, there's no problem at four. So you can meet at four, and then I'm, I'm planning lots of stuff that we'll discuss exam oriented stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. See you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Thank you.